Hello everybody and welcome to this GCSE Chemistry question walkthrough. Today we're going to look at some bonding questions. And if you've not had a chance to look at these questions before, you could always pause the video and answer them yourself and then look at my kind of modelling as I go through the answers. And so what I will do is I will write my thoughts in blue as I go through the questions and then I'll write the answers that actually get you the marks in green so you can see which bit is thinking and which bit is the crucial content that you're going to get marks for. Okay, this first question is reasonably straightforward. It gets more difficult as they go through. The diagram represents a particle of methane and we've got a picture here that is showing the atoms and we have got a dot and cross diagram and the dots and the crosses are representing electrons and they are in a position between these two atoms. So there's a carbon and a hydrogen very close to this pair of electrons and so they are sharing that pair of electrons and that's a big clue about the type of bonding this is because the sharing of pairs of electrons is covalent and we will need that later so covalent and so the question is what is the formula of methane the first question and so there is one carbon atom so we put a C the other element that's present is hydrogen, but there are four of them, and so we write this with a little subscript four. The most common wrong answer would have that four sort of up in the air, like a power, like a squared or something like that, but it needs to be down on the line and a small four. The next question, which of the words best describes the methane particle shown in the diagram? atom, ion or molecule? Now the correct answer is molecule and the reason it's molecule is that the definition is two or more atoms and they need to be bonded together whereas an atom is just kind of like one so it's a single thing and an ion is not necessarily a single thing or a molecule it could actually be either but crucially for an ion it needs to be positive or negative and we don't have any positives or negatives on show so that means it is definitely not ionic choose a word from the box to answer the question what type of bonding is shown in the diagram now we've already answered that and the answer is covalent but how else would we know to tell these apart so metallic bonding is the bonding found in metals so all the elements say, I don't know, magnesium, the bonding in magnesium would be metallic. And then ionic is where you've got a metal bonded to a non-metal and carbon and hydrogen are both non-metals. So it can't be ionic because we've got two non-metals and that's what we've got for covalent, two or more non-metals bonded together. And so, as I say, carbon and hydrogen are non-metals. And also there's the clue about the sharing pairs of electrons. So that's a double reason why the answer is covalent. This question is about the compound ammonia. And we've been given some information saying it's an important chemical used to make fertilizers and it contains the elements nitrogen and hydrogen. And we've got some pictures here showing the electron arrangements of nitrogen and also of hydrogen next to it. And we've got little circles representing the electron of hydrogen and crosses representing the electrons of nitrogen. And notice that nitrogen's got five in its outer shell and hydrogen has got one. So complete the diagram to show the arrangement of electrons in a molecule of ammonia. Now there's only one mark for this, which I think is mean, but they have already given you the electrons. So nitrogen has got five electrons, so it's got two in its inner shell and then five in its outer shell. So you need to recreate it almost exactly as it was. That's why it's not too many marks. And so that's five crosses for nitrogen in its outer shell, but don't forget the two in the inner shell. And then each of the hydrogens brings a dot that brings another electron. And so this is now finished. But just to highlight what we're showing, this is a shared pair of electrons. And that's a covalent bond. And this one is another shared pair. And we've got another shared pair here. So it's in blue, so you don't need to write it. But these are all shared pairs of electrons. And this one at the top, that's not a pair of electrons in, involved in bonding. That's kind of uh, called a lone pair of electrons. So it's there and it's important to acknowledge that nitrogen's got it, but we don't need it for the mark. 
Name the type of bonding which holds the nitrogen and hydrogen atoms together. Well, that's covalent. I already mentioned that earlier. And the same clues as the earlier question. There's two non-metals being bonded together and they are sharing pairs of electrons. And that's what makes it covalent. The next one is about the electronic structure of a magnesium atom and a magnesium ion. So crucial words here is ion. And when you see something like that, it needs to kind of like ring alarm bells that maybe this is about ionic bonding and it probably will be. So the diagram shows the electronic structures. We've got the magnesium atom and the magnesium ion. Notice the difference. These X's are representing electrons. Notice the difference that the magnesium atom has got three shells and it's got two electrons in its outer shell, whereas the magnesium ion has got only two shells with a full outer shell. Now the charge of the magnesium ion. Now for the magnesium atom, remember, it's an atom because it's got the same number of protons and electrons. So the magnesium atom has got 12 protons because the atomic number is 12 and it's got 12 electrons as well. And the positives and the negatives cancel each other out perfectly. And that is for the atom. Now the ion, it's still magnesium, so it's still got those 12 positive protons, but it's lost two electrons, so it's down to 10 electrons. So the 12 positives and the 10 negatives don't cancel each other out perfectly. We've got two more positives than we've got negatives, and so the charge is 2 plus. And then we move on to a different type of ionic bonding. Calcium bromide has got the formula CaBr2. What does this tell you about the ions in the compound? Well, what it tells you is that they are present in a two to one ratio. So there are two Br or two bromide for one calcium. So that's the crucial idea that they're both present in a two to one ratio. So there's two bromide for one calcium. And I think for the second mark, I would want you to be saying that the bromide is Br minus or Br1 minus and that the calcium is 2 plus. So you get one mark for saying that they're present in a 2 to 1 ratio. You get the second mark for saying, well, the bromide is Br minus and the calcium is 2 plus. And that's why they're present in a 2 to 1 ratio, because they don't have the same charges. You need two bromide to cancel the charge of one calcium. Question four, this starts off looking at subatomic particles. So those are smaller than atoms and they're found inside atoms. And the first question is a grid to fill in this table where we show off the knowledge that we know what each subatomic particle is like. So let's just dive straight in. The neutron has got a relative mass of one, and that is the same as the relative mass of a proton. And so we know then that this must be the proton. And like I say, the thoughts are one and one, these are the same, and that means that this must be the proton. Now, that means by a process of elimination, then, that the third particle must be the electron. And so that's the masses. And we know that that makes sense because the electron is very, very tiny. And then the relative charges, we've already mentioned that electrons are negative, or you can write negative one or minus one or one minus. Protons are positive, or you could write one plus. I generally write one plus just so we know that there's no confusion. And neutrons have got no charge, so we can put zero there, or you could write the word neutral. You could, in, in fact, write the word uh, positive and negative if you wanted. The next question is all based around this table, and this table at first looks quite confusing. So we've got the name of the element at the top of the first column, and there are three, fluorine, neon, and sodium. Then we've got their symbol, and then we've got how many electrons the element has got in each of the first three shells. So fluorine, we are told, has got two, then seven, then zero. Neon has got two, then eight, then zero, and sodium two, then eight, then one. And the question says, two of these elements can react together to form a compound. What is the name and the formula of this compound? So before we can answer that question, we need to work out which element they're not talking about. And the one that they're not talking about is neon. And the reason it's neon is because neon has got eight in its outermost shell, and so this is full. And hopefully you know that neon is in group zero, and group zero, the noble gases, they aren't formed, they don't form bonds, they aren't involved in bonding. And so that means that the two elements that they're talking about are fluorine and sodium. 
and they're going to bond together to make a chemical compound and the compound's name is sodium fluoride. Do note it's fluoride, the name of compounds always ends IDE when there's two elements involved, so it's fluoride. And then the formula is NaF, and you probably would have guessed it was NaF if you didn't know any different. And that's correct, but the reason that it's NaF is that sodium is a 1 plus ion and fluoride is a 1 minus ion, so they join together in a 1 to 1 ratio. The next question asks us about what type of bonding holds this compound together. Now I've just signposted it by referring to them as sodium ions and fluoride ions, and the type of bonding is ionic. And the other clue that it's going to be ionic bonding is the fact that we've got sodium, which is a metal, and we are bonding it with fluorine, which is a non-metal. And so a metal and a non-metal will always bond in an ionic fashion. And what that specifically involves is what's tested in the final question, which is explain in terms of electron transfer how the bonding occurs in the compound. And so we must mention electrons. If we don't, we're denying ourselves the marks. And there are two marks up for grabs here. And so we need to talk about the electron and it is transferred from the sodium to the fluorine. So transferred from sodium to fluorine. And that will be our first mark for saying those words. And then we need to say one other thing. And then we've got three options. So we must talk about the electron transferred to the fluorine from the sodium. And then we're either now saying that this leaves us with a positive sodium ion and a negative fluoride ion. Or we could say that the ions are attracted to each other because they've got opposite charges or you could get both the first and the second mark for a dot and cross diagram that showed sodium with a dot with its one electron at the beginning and fluoride with its seven outer shell electrons at first. And then it turns into sodium with a positive charge and fluoride with its eight electrons having gained the extra one from sodium now being negatively charged. So that bottom bit that I'll just do a little box around just so you can tell them apart. So this bit here actually captures both of those marks just from that equation. This and the final question are both higher tier questions. So they're definitely a bit harder here with a lot less instruction to how to answer them. And this is about SCART leads, which are actually old fashioned now. They're uh, more HDMI cables now, but they used to collect, connect to electronic devices such as a, a skybox or a television or something like that. So it says here, gold is a typical metal and it's used in the SCART lead. It coats the SCART lead. Describe the structure and bonding in gold. And so first of all, you need to talk about it being a giant structure where you have got, by the way, three marks up for grabs. So it's a giant structure, or you can talk about it being a lattice or a regular pattern at the very least. And then you have got a sea of delocalized electrons or a sea of electrons is probably fine, but delocalized is a great word to throw in if you can. And these delocalized electrons are, of course, negatively charged. So I'll just put that in here and the negatively charged electrons are attracted to the positively charged ions that are in the lattice. So the, so the positive ions and the negative electrons attract each other. And that is what a metallic bond is. It's the attraction between these positive metal ions and the negative delocalized electrons. And then following on from that, why is gold a good conductor of electricity? Well, it is to do with the electrons that can move or quite simply the delocalized electrons because the conduction of electricity is the movement of those electrons. And let me just clarify, the term delocalized means that they're not in a specific place. So electrons that aren't delocalized, they are in their shells and they're fixed. They can orbit around the nucleus, but they can't move out of that circular path. Whereas delocalized electrons are free to move around anywhere. And then finally, the surface of some metals such as iron corrode when exposed to the air, suggests why this reduces the electrical conductivity of the metal. Well, corrosion is the formation of an oxide layer around the iron. So instead of it being iron 
it will now be iron oxide. And so iron oxide is obviously ionic and the ions in something that is ionic are not free to move. They need to be uh, melted before they can conduct electricity. And so they don't have any delocalized electrons. So that means that the electrons can't move through the structure, or at least that's true of the surface. There'll be delocalized electrons on the iron further in, but at the surface, it will be an ionic compound and it does not have free electrons that can move. OK, this final question is about the formation of sodium chloride from sodium and chlorine reacting together. And then it says, describe in terms of electron arrangement the type of bonding in. And so we're in terms of electron arrangement. So a molecule of chlorine. So we've got a clue that this is a molecule and that suggests covalent. And also we're talking about chlorine, which we can tell from the equation is Cl2. So we've got two atoms of non-metal bonded together. And so in terms of what we need to say for the marks, first of all, we need to say that this is a covalent bond. And then what that means is they will have a shared pair of electrons. And so those are the first two marks of the three that are up for grabs. And the reason that we're getting a third mark is we need to personalise it because we haven't really said anything about chlorine yet. And so chlorine has the electron arrangement of 2,8,7. And so what that means is that chlorine needs one more electron. In fact, for the third mark, you could say chlorine has the electron arrangement 2,8,7 or chlorine needs one more electron. And that's all you need to say for those three marks. And then the second one, the compound of sodium chloride. Now sodium is a metal and chloride is chlorine, which is a non-metal. And so as a result of this, what we're describing is ionic bonding. And that is the first mark. It is ionic bonding. And then we need to show how they bond ionically. So in the same way as we did in the previous question, sodium is 281 and chlorine is 287. And so what happens is that one electron in sodium's outer shell transfers over to chlorine's outer shell. And so we just need to put that into words for that third mark. So sodium loses one electron and then chlorine gains one electron. And that will give us a third mark. And then for the final mark, we need to say what an ionic bond actually is. And so an ionic bond is when the oppositely charged ions attract each other. And those ions are sodium one plus because it's lost one electron and chloride one minus because it's gained one electron. OK, that was the final question. We'll leave it there. Hope that was useful. I'll see you again soon.